Hi, Tom here. In this week's Circle Line Art School Drawing, I'll show you one way to make a sketch of the painting Nighthawks by the American artist Edward Hopper. The first step in this drawing is to draw a wide rectangle for the format of the image. All of the elements, all of the parts of this composition are related to this format, the shape of the image. The wide format that is used emphasises the horizontal nature of the lines within the drawing of the diner. The next step is to draw an angular base for the corner of the diner. And then a large window on the far side, a rectangle on the far side, and then the top shape of the diner. At this stage, the lines just need to be sketched in, but check the lines, make sure that they work with all the other lines in the drawing, and they fit with the outline of the format of the image as well, so that there's some tension in the lines. If you see at this stage something that needs changing in your drawing, this is a really good stage to change it before we work into the drawing too much. Next, add two thin vertical uprights to divide the large expanse of glass. Make sure these uprights are very thin. Now we can add a curve to the corner of the diner on the left. This is a small detail in this image, but it's critical for the whole overall drawing to work. So check that the curve feels right. Now we can draw the interior of the diner. Start by drawing a long bar, just with a few lines and then add a door in the background. Outside we can draw some lines for a road. And then above the road, above the horizontal lines for the road, we can start to block in a shop that's on the other side of the road. Start this by just drawing some basic shapes, and then we can break down these shapes into smaller rectangles for windows and a central door. For now, it's just a sketch all the lines can change if they need to. So keep checking your drawing and making sure it feels right. There's a thickness on the right of the far window of the diner. We should add that in because that's useful when we come to shade. Next, we can indicate some of the details within the diner. We can sketch the four people who all seem quite isolated. We don't need any details for these people, just a very loose sketch using as few lines as possible. In this way, by using as few lines as possible, hopefully we can create an image where the viewer of the image will see, sort of see more into the drawing than is really there. So the viewer will be able to interpret the few lines that we draw as people, even though they're just really a few lines. So don't overdo the details, no details are needed. So don't overdo the details when drawing people. For this image, no details are needed. Next, we can darken some of the lines of the outside and the inside of the diner. We could add a few more structural lines. Try to notice how the lines within the image all relate to each other. They sort of link up. 
in a whiplash sort of movement between the front and the back of the diner, which creates a satisfying amount of tension within the image. The most important part of this tension within the image is the curved glass at the corner of the diner. And all of the tonal values, the light and dark, will relate to this edge of the glass. So as we put in more details to the actual structure of the building, we're creating darker areas, which will make this area of light, the curve of the glass which catches the light, when it becomes a tonal drawing, will have more impact because we're breaking down the other areas of the drawing into smaller areas of tonal contrast. And then we can draw in the three windows above the shop in the background on the left, which is across the road from the diner. When drawing these lines, they're just structural lines of the building, but they're also lines which show the edge of shadows. They don't need to be accurate, but they need to be precise. So crisp, sharp lines will be most useful. When you're ready, you can start shading your drawing. For my drawing, I just use a 4B pencil. Any soft dark pencil would be fine. The best advice for shading is, I think, to just try and use three tonal values. So dark tones, medium tones, and light tones. Keep the shading to these three tonal values. It will simplify the drawing, and it will also make the drawing stronger. Because by using just three tonal values, dark, medium and light, any area that you draw, it's just a matter of deciding which tonal value you wish it to be. Is it going to be dark, is it going to be medium, or is it going to be light? This will give a strength to your drawing, because it will give clarity to the tonal values and how all of the tonal values relate to each other, all the areas of shading, how they all relate to each other. We can draw the whole image using just these three tonal values, dark, medium and light, but there's one other tonal value that we should use as well, and that is the lightest tone, which will be any area which we don't shade in at all. The lightest tonal area of this image will be the interior wall of the diner and an area of light which is sort of trapped within the curved edge of the glass wall of the diner. We can make these areas, these lightest areas, seem bright by making all of the other areas darker with our three tonal values, dark, medium and light. So once the whole image has three tonal values, apart from the lightest areas, then the lightest areas of unshaded drawing will suddenly seem brighter because the tonal values within the drawing all relate to the other tonal values which are next door to them. So we can make the lightest areas seem bright by making sure all of the other areas are either dark, medium or light tonal values. If you'd like to learn more about drawing techniques, please consider joining one of my online drawing courses for beginners. You'll find details at circlelineartschool.com. If you'd like to keep up to date with the content that I make, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School. Thanks very much. Up next, see the drawing unfold in real time. Thanks for watching and see you next time.
If you'd like to learn more about drawing techniques, please consider joining one of my online drawing courses for beginners. You'll find details at circlelineartschool.com. If you'd like to keep up to date with the content that I make, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Circle Line Art School. Thanks for watching and see you next time.